Okay, so before I call this meeting into order, there's a few things I need to read. Uh, this board meeting is being live streamed for the convenience of the public at www.okaloosaschools.com. The public may participate in the public comment and or public hearing portions of this meeting by either personal attendance or by calling the school board meeting public participation phone line. A separate seating area has been set aside for the press and public who are in attendance at the meeting in accordance with social distancing guidelines as provided by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. If calling into the meeting, you should call area code 850-833-3100. The phone lines will be operational beginning at 6 p.m. on the night of the board meeting and callers will be transferred into the board meeting during the public comment portion and or public hearing portion of the meeting only in the order in which calls are received. If you are calling into the meeting to make public comment, please be patient as there may be a wait time while being transferred into the meeting. So with that being said, I call this meeting to order and we're gonna go down to item two, approval of the agenda and item 2.1, we have some changes. Con uh, excuse me, we have uh, item 8.8, .8, proposed school operational supporting staffing grid and school supplement grid. Uh, discretionary budget for fiscal year 2020-2021 was moved to discussion agenda 10.2. Added item 8.14, emergency purchase century link for bandwidth increase uh, at DJJ facility. This is an emergency purchase so that students at the DJJ will have access to better internet bandwidth during the district's online instruction. And discuss an agenda, uh, discussion agenda added item 10.2, proposed school operational uh, support staffing grid and school supplement grid discretionary budget for fiscal year 2020 through 2021. I need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Mr. Destin makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Lamar White. Dr. White makes the second. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Uh, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly? Yes. And Dr. White? Yes. And the motion carries five to zero. Uh, going back to the opening of the meeting, I, I do have to recognize that the Honorable Linda Vancheck, the Honorable Dr. Diane Kelly, and the Honorable Dr. Labar White are participating uh, via the telephone, which is in accordance to the governor's uh, emergency orders uh, as far as conducting school board meetings. So now we'll move to recognitions and Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Bryant. Uh, first of all, Victoria Orcutt. Uh, she's a, an amazing uh, young lady from Fort Walton Beach High School and actually comes from a line of Orcutts who, who seem to do very well, both scholastically and uh, athletically. And we are recognizing Victoria tonight uh, for being Florida's female Wendy's High School Heisman winner. So you think about that being a high school Heisman winner and the recipient of the 2020 All Sports Association Female Scholastic Award. And I just want to read just a, <clears throat> a quick uh, statement uh, about Victoria. Victoria Orcutt has mastered success. Her impressive accolades as a multi-sport scholar athlete include competing and winning at the state and national levels while academically maintaining a 4.71 GPA. Highlights include setting 11 school and four district records in swimming, being named Northwest Florida Swimmer of the Year in 2018, and representing the United States at, 2000, at the 2018 Modern Pentathlon Youth World Championships and the 2017 and 2018 Pan American Championships. While she is a determined competitor, she never forgets Albert Einstein's words of wisdom, strive not to be a success, but rather to be a value. And these are some of the things that her parents have really instilled, instilled in her to be a value rather than to strive for success. So Victoria Orcutt, very, very well deserved, and we congratulate and recognize her today. And if I may add, uh, Superintendent, if you were to look in the dictionary under uh, excellence, character uh, you would find Victoria's picture she has won so many awards 
that it took just amazing, amazing uh, capability and character to win. So uh, I'm very proud of her. And I might point out, try not to brag too much, but <laughs> we've had several Heisman winners at Fort Walton Beach High School over the last few years. So yes, sir. it seems to be running in their blood over there. And to say that there's another ore cut coming up the ranks, too. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. <laughs> All right. All right. So we'll move down to uh, visitors. Um, we'll wait just, the, well, there's a 30 second delay, so we'll wait. And we have no visitors at this time. Uh, administrative personnel appointments, none. Uh, public comment. And this is where anybody could call in or come in, pr uh, in person. So. Okay. okay, so now we're gonna move down to seven, which is committee and staff reports. That was workshop only. And now we're down to the consent agenda. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved, Chairman. Mr. Destin makes the motion. I need a second, please. I'll second. Okay. Diane Kelly. Dr. Kelly makes a second. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. Yeah. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. The motion carries five to zero. So now we'll move to uh, item nine. And this is uh, superintendent's human resource recommendations. Uh, school board members, just so you know, uh, Dr. Hell is present uh, in the other room, but if you need him, he is going to make his way in. So we'll start with uh, item 9.1 and 9.2 are informational. So 9.3 employment separations i need a motion to approve please so moved mr destin makes a motion dr kelly a second any discussion hearing none mr destin how do you vote yes miss avancheck how do you vote yes dr kelly how do you vote yes and dr white how do you vote yes okay and that motion carries five to zero nine point four personnel recommendations I need a motion to approve. So moved, Chairman. Uh, Ms. Avancheck will get the motion and Mr. Destin will second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Okay, that motion carries five to zero. 9.5 is employee suspension. I need a motion to approve. So moved. I'll move. Okay, so Mr. Destin won on that one. Uh, and I'll go with, uh, I think I heard Ms. Avancheck next. So uh, Mr. Destin makes the motion to approve. Ms. Avancheck second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. That motion carries five to zero. 9.6, reinstatement, reimbursement of sick leave due to line of duty illness, injury, medical examination. I need a motion to approve, please. So moved. Mr. Desta makes a motion, second. I'll second it. Second, Ms. Avancheck. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yeah. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries five to zero. 9.7, leave without pay. Uh, I need a motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Destin makes the motion. I need a second, please. I'll second. Second, Dr. Kelly. Kelly. Second, Dr. Kelly. Any uh, discussion? 
Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yeah. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, that motion carries five to zero. We're going to move to discussion uh, agenda, but also to remind that we do have a public hearing at 615. So we will go to item 10.1, charter school renewal contract between the school board of Okaloosa County, Florida, and Liza Jackson Preparatory School Incorporated. If we, and Mr. Chair, if we could take that up with the public hearing, if you wouldn't mind moving on to 10.2, and then we could come back to 10.1. Oh, yes, sir. Hearing. Thank you, Mr. Uh, McGinnis, for reminding me of that. So did you hear that board members were just going to move that to the that's going to be part of the public comment or public hearing portion of the meeting. So now we'll go to 10.2 which was moved from consent agenda proposed school operational support staffing grid and school supplement grid a discretionary budget for fiscal year 2020 uh, through 2021 and Mr. Chambers I believe you would like to make a comment to begin with. No, I appreciate it. and. Uh I just want to start off by saying to the board, I very much appreciate the conversation that we uh, that we had on Thursday. I know that a uh, it was brought up about you know the times that that we are in and making sure that uh, you know we are fiscally responsible. So I, I do I do want to just say a couple of things, but I also want to thank um, the board members uh, for the great comments that that were made about uh, the Baker AP position as well as the band positions and I appreciate that support and, and very much uh, appreciate the, the words of making sure that we're also fiscally responsible. And I, I did want to say that, that I assure to the board that, that one, that we will have a, a balanced budget and this is one of the, of the many budgets that we do have in the school district that will come before you. But then two, this will also be a cost neutral um, uh, venture as well. We've already uh, we've already been looking at other programs and where we can um, reorganize or restructure. We did that again after the board workshop on Thursday, and uh, I commit to you here publicly that the, we will this will be a cost neutral situation, and you will have a balanced budget uh, when this budget comes before you. But just once again, I think this is the great thing about this board. You know, we look at all. Um, make sure that we we turn over all stones and this is something that I appreciate okay so with that being said I need a motion for approval of this proposed school uh, um, operational support staffing grid do I have a motion to approve I'll move that we approve the, the support and supplemental grid discretionary budget um, with, with a simple caveat that it be revenue neutral which our superintendent has pledged to do okay Thank you, Mr. Destin. Uh, did y'all hear his? Did y'all hear that school board members that are on the phone? Yes, and I'll second it. Okay, yes. Miss Avancheck makes the second. Any further discussion? Starting with Mr. Destin, any discussion? No. Okay, uh, Miss Avancheck, any discussion? Yes, I just want to briefly reiterate what I said um, a little bit on Thursday morning that. Um, and I believe actually Dr. White used the term of showing some um, equity in our uh, high schools. And the superintendent pointed out that Baker is the fifth largest school in our district. And I've personally worked with the administration at Baker. And I think that this uh, 10 month position is certainly warranted and is necessary at, at this time. And uh, I know that we, have a tough situation right now but uh, if we put this allocation in um, we know that that will give them some support up there if for some reason with our current situation um, and the budget for the state of Florida for education changes then we don't necessarily have to fill that position of AP since it's a 10 month it's going to be not filled till later uh, towards the fall anyway so if something drastic happens or, or whatever to the budget, then we are not held to that, but there would just still be an allocation. And that's why I'm, by, I'm voting in favor of it. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Ms. Vancheck. Dr. Kelly, any comments? I, yes, I do have a couple of comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I have given a great deal of thought and research to whether or not this is the appropriate time to add these particular positions. I've also spoken with our CFO numerous times, as well as with both the impacted band directors and uh, the two other positions that are on here. And I'd just like to make a couple of points for the public to know that several of these are indeed not administrative, really only one is. Many of them are only changing the funding source. They are not new positions, they're just funding source changes. And if we were to be the recipients of any tax revenues, we're not able to use those funds for these positions. They can only be used for capital projects. And this represents less than a tenth of 1% of our total budget of $400 million. So when you're looking at this entire package is much less than $200,000 and brings so much to the schools. And as I said, going back to my campaign days, I'll always see four things that help the students in the school. And these expenditures are school expenditures. They're not district level expenditures. For all of those reasons, I just can't find a reason not to vote for these positions right now. And as we said, with a caveat, that they would be budget neutral overall. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Dr. White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, the only remark I would have would be in reference to my remarks on Thursday during the workshop. And uh, I think uh, the motion as it's been made uh, and considering the superintendent's uh, comments, um, I certainly will vote for this particular motion. Thank you. Okay. Well, with that being said, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? I'll vote yes. Ms. Ivancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, and the motion will carry five to zero. So if y'all would please go down to 17.1, and we're gonna to move to public hearing for approval of the charter school renewal contract between the school board of Okaloosa County, Florida, and Liza Jackson Preparatory School Incorporated. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Desta makes a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second it, I'll second. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ivancheck, I, I got you there. Uh, I have a motion and a second. Is there any, any discussion? Oh yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, is there anybody from the public that is here to speak on this particular item? Okay, hearing none, uh, Mr. McInnes, would you like to, did you have yes, a comment? Sir. No, sir. Uh, we, we went over in detail the charter on Thursday, and it's here tonight for your approval, uh, okay. subject to the public hearing, which you've now conducted. Okay. Uh, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. And that motion carries five to zero. So now we'll go down to construction program owners representatives business and 11.1 .1 program status report mr yes, destin chairman as as we spoke at the workshop i provided the agenda from the meeting to the board and and we have two new items on here that we will vote on in just a moment okay any uh comments for mr destin's or mr destin or any questions Ms. Vancheck. no thank you dr kelly no. Dr. White. No, thanks. Okay, thank you. So we'll move down to 11.2, uh, TPM program number six, task order number eight, pre-GMP Kenwood Elementary Kitchen, dining, roo uh, dining roof replacement. I need a motion to approve this. I move we approve 11.2. Okay, Mr. Destin makes the motion. Who, was that Ms. Ivancheck? Yes, sir. Okay, Ms. Ivancheck makes a second. Uh, any other discussion on this? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Ivancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. 
and the motion carries five to zero. So 11.3, program number six, task order number five, time and materials, task order, emergency remedial efforts, both design and construction for repairs to Joe Etheridge Stadium at Choctahatchee High School. I need a motion to approve. I'll move we approve. <laughs> Mr. Destin makes the motion and Ms. Ivanchek, you'll get the second. Any discussion? Okay, here and none. Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. And that motion carries five to zero. Nothing on section 12, so we'll move to attorney's business. Mr. McGinnis. No report. Thank you, sir. And now we'll move to 14 superintendent's business. Mr. Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to give just a couple of uh, comments really quickly. As you know, as we've gone through um, this, this pandemic, there's been a lot of uh, changes to public education. And I do want to say just from the, from the very beginning of this, when you, when you start thinking about when decisions were made to, to close schools, when the decision was made to go to an online model, uh, when the decision was made to uh, keep schools closed throughout the remainder of the year, when decisions were made based on athletics or promotion retention even graduation i do want to say um, you know i just like many of the superintendents across the state you know we've had several uh, superintendent uh, conference calls and meetings so these have been done virtually so i appreciate the fact that there's been a lot of good discussion amongst superintendents throughout um, these meetings we've also had several meetings with the department of education and the department of education has given a lot of guidance um, along the way additionally but I do want you all to know also you know we do speak uh, just like you all probably speak with some board members across the state I also speak with some superintendents across the state um, as well so I just really appreciate the fact that for many things a lot of the districts are on the same page but as you can imagine you know in certain situations there's gonna be things that we do differently you know based on Okaloosa County and I think graduation eventually will probably be one of those things where, you know, what one district does could be um, different than another. But I just wanted to share that with you. So I do appreciate the communication and I also appreciate the communication during this time um, with the board. And I know I've had conversations with, with each of you in different times. Um, and that means a lot when we can have these good uh, conversations. And a lot of the conversations we've had with you all have helped us um, make good decisions so i just appreciate that the other uh point that i wanted to make uh dexter dexter day from uh, crestview high school all of, you, all of you know principal day he came to me last week and he said hey what do you think about doing um a pledge of allegiance every monday at eight o'clock i thought that was a great uh a great idea one you know we're, that we're a military community two we obviously love our country and that's first and foremost but it was also a way to bring the schools and the district departments together with uh, our students and families. So this is something that's, uh, that's been put out across the district to families as well as our employees. So every Monday at eight o'clock, feel free to step outside your house or where you are and every Monday we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, that was neat today. We actually came in, came in here today. And the last thing I wanna say, two pieces on, on HR. I think on Thursday I mentioned a little bit about MIS and the great job that they've done technologically. HR um, doing a, a great job behind the scenes as well. We just had a, a virtual job fair and uh, just looking at, you know, if we have openings, what uh, might some of these candidates uh, look like? We want to make sure that um, when we're able to hire, that we have people that, uh, that we know, we've, we've vetted and we've done a good job. So there were over 60 individuals that took part on this uh, conference call, excuse me, on this virtual uh, um, job fair. So it was pretty neat, but especially uh, a, a, a big shout out goes to uh, Lindsay Maxey, Courtney Huffstetler, Mandy Jeter, Donna Ward, and Janet Ward, who all made this happen under the leadership of Dr. Hale. So I just wanted to share that as well. So very, very um, successful virtual job fair and a lot of time and effort and energy went into that being a success and then the the last thing I wanted to say is <clears throat> as you know we have on-site personnel who are 
working on site and then we have individuals such as our teachers are working from the house but then we also have ed support and folks who are working from the house and let's just say it's a bus driver who obviously can't drive from the house one of the things that that we did and what hr has uh done a great job of is we've made sure that we had a number of training videos and as of this morning we've assigned over 23,000 safe schools trainings for 680 employees um, and nearly 10,000 of those have been completed to date so others are still working through the process going through the training and one of the the pieces that we hope to see with this training also will be a reduction in workman's comp and other health claims so this is an opportunity to get a lot of training done for employees as well so I appreciate uh, the work of HR in this venture and, and one last nope. thing I apologize and yeah, I do want to thank um, I do want to thank Rita when when you go through a staffing pattern and have to take in um, all different types of information all different types of input and then be able to do it take it in and do it in a, in a responsible manner um, with a smile on her face and working with her people the way she does it and she always loves when she gets uh when, when people praise her so, so she's over there shaking her head but um i just appreciate the work that that she does which is second to none thank you mr chambers so now we'll move down to school board members announcements and requests for information and the honorable dr white i'll start with you sir thank you mr bryant and uh what uh, I guess that uh, everyone, uh, all agencies and all governments uh, uh, in the state of Florida and really throughout the nation um, are concerned about uh, certainly relate to the comments made by a board member uh, Mr. Destin on Thursday's workshop and particularly in reference to budgets and um, I've done a little bit of research on that and um, I sent uh, some uh, news articles to the superintendent regarding um, what has been happening in the state of Florida in various governmental agencies and entities concerning preparation for uh, uh, budgets. Um, some of the articles pertain specifically to Florida school boards and superintendents, and so uh, I thought that uh, my colleagues on the board and certainly uh, the superintendent and his staff uh, might find those articles informative as, as we head into um, this, this new season. But that's really all that I have to say tonight, Mr. Bryant. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dr. White, you did say you uh, presented those copies. Uh, would it be okay for Miss uh, uh, for Jan to send those to us? Yes, sir. That's what I'll do. I'll okay. send those to um, Ms. Crawford, and then she can forward it to uh, my colleagues on the school board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. White. Thank you for all your research, and I, I know it will be very informative to us. And the Honorable Dr. Kelly, you're up. Thank you. Uh, I do have just a couple of things to say. First of all, we do have a student who is a 17-year-old junior at Niceville, Haley Moriarty, who uh, organized by herself a food drive for those in our area who needed a little help during the pandemic. And I believe I heard that that young lady collected more than a thousand food items and several hundred dollars in cash and checks that she was able to deliver to the Catholic Charities of Northwest Florida and to Niceville Sharing and Caring. So I thought that kind of initiative by one of our juniors was really outstanding so just wanted to give her a shout out and as well i wanted to say uh, kudos to our stem school for recently using their 3d printers to contribute to the ppe for other organizations during this pandemic time so that was pretty uh, creative and generous i thought of our very own people to do those things and then lastly i just might add what fun it's been for me to have made up baskets for our teachers who, as the superintendent said, have vastly changed the way they deliver instruction to our students. And uh, we've had our little quizzes every morning and they, we've had a lot of fun and we've learned some Oklahoma County School District history as well. So that's been a lot of fun and thank you for allowing me to do that. That's all I have. 
Thank you, Dr. Kelly. And now the Honorable Ms. Avancek. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I appreciate that. Uh, again, I'd like to uh, follow the superintendent by saying how much I appreciate our district staff and all that they're doing um, as we continue through this pandemic and keeping things going. I really do appreciate it. And there's, only, there's you know, so much we can say about Ms. Gowan. I always say she's, uh, when you say the name Rita, it's like saying Madonna or Cher or something like that. <laughs> she can go by one name. She is so famous in our district for all the things she does. So I appreciate that. All you got to say is Rita and people get it. So that's, that's another thing. Um, like to talk about, too, in the community, uh, a program where it's called Adopt a Senior. And this is uh, it started on social media where people can adopt a senior this, this last month of, of, you know, the main school year. And you're just uh, trying to boost those seniors up who um, obviously will not be having a graduation of the sort that they expected. And I think that's a, a great program out there. And uh, I'm participating in that and adopting a couple of seniors in our district and just uh, showing them that we do appreciate and understand what uh, they're going through uh, ending up their high school careers. Another thing, and I don't know if you were going to bring this up, um, Mr. Chairman, but there's um, a teacher up at Shoal River Middle School, uh, Ms. Melanie Rose. She's a sixth grade teacher and also the volleyball coach. And she was um, given the award of the Golden Apple out of WKRG Channel 5 in Mobile, which is particularly unusual that they would pick someone even out of their state, but it is their viewing area. But they were so impressed with the things that Ms. Rose is doing um, to get her students to really stay in contact and keep her students engaged um, online and everything. So I'd like to uh, congratulate Ms. Rose and her principal, um, Mr. Craig Miller, over there at Shoal River. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vancheck. And yes, I, I actually had that down, but I appreciate your uh, your uh, kind words about Miss Rose and I will echo exactly what you said she is an awesome teacher and you're right WKRG uh, doesn't offer that this far out very much so it is a big honor for her and for Shoal River Middle School and with that Mr. the Honorable Mr. Destin all right um, thank you chairman and uh, like my classmate uh, Dr. White <laughs> I, like to, I like to read and, and research, and being a former history major, I especially like to read history of events to try to get a window into what we may do uh, in our present situations. I just got through reading an article about the 1917 pandemic, and I discussed this with the superintendent before the meeting. Uh, according to the article that I read, 20% of the students after 1917, 1918 did not re-enroll in school because the parents were afraid that it was too dangerous. Um, Mr. Horton is our math major, but if we took 20% of our students, that would be around 6,000. Uh, we get an average of 7,000 in, in our funds from the state, and I, I hope that I'm not too far off, but that comes out to $42 million. Mm -hmm. And if, if we want to see Miss Scanlon have to run, we <laughs> tell her what, how we're going to deal with a deficit like that. Now, of course, we have an advantage over those folks. We didn't, they didn't have online education. Correct. We do. So I'm hoping that that number will go down dramatically because online education will be something that will be an option. And, and if Mr. Jordan tell me, Okaloosa Online, we still get FTE funds for that. Is that correct? Yes, sir, we do. Based on completion of credits, every uh, Oklahoma Online is our own uh, school district operated virtual program. It, it is, and hopefully that will, will cause that crazy number that I just uh, quoted to not be anywhere near that. But even if it's 25% uh, of 42 million, it's a lot of money. That's laboring under the assumption that the state of Florida will give us the same amounts of FTE funds that they did this year. And I was listening to the president and the uh, conference tonight, and I guess the CDC are coming out with some, in, some uh, guidelines on seven or eight different industries. Education was one of them, and at least as best I could tell, one of their recommendations was that students eat in their classrooms, not go to, not go to their lunchroom, lunchrooms. 
Uh, there'll be a cost associated with that if we have to adopt it. Uh, the other one was that we have to social distance in schools. I did not discuss that one by the time I left. But the only way I understand that we can social distance in our schools would be to probably dual session. I, you know, I hope there's some other way. And, and I make these points because we're about to go into a realm that we have never experienced. And we have no idea what money we're going to have to work with. Hopefully it will become more clear as we go. Um, but I think the old model of the way we do business is not going to work. And, and, I, and I don't expect you all to spend days and days and hours and hours trying to predict an unpredictable future. But I know that you will be looking at these issues and, and trying to help us out. You know, another question I had is as we move hopefully this fall or when they allow us to come back to the, the model we have now where students come to school, um, are we going to have an option for the online education that would make a lot of the ones that are going to be scared feel more secure? And what will the state say about that as it pertains to FTE funds? So we just have a lot of questions in front of us. And uh, I want to congratulate you all. You have been doing your very best to keep up with these uh, changes that we have no idea what they may be. But we have some very, very uh, different things coming down the pike at us as we move forward. So thanks for working on it. But uh, put your thinking caps on, and when we find out what the CDC is going to tell us is a good idea to do in school systems nationwide, then we're going to have to adapt. Yes, so, sir. Thanks. Right. Any other comments, Mr. Oh, Preston? that's more than enough, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Destin. Okay, so now we'll move down to, oh, real quick, I do have one other announcement. Uh, the gentleman that produces these school board meetings for us, Mr. Paul McNeely, is turning 29 today so we want to wish him a happy birthday of course we can't show him on screen because he's in the uh, production booth but uh, happy birthday to Paul and thank you for again all that he does to make us all look good with the new high definition equipment that we're broadcasting in now so so we'll move down to public comment is there anybody here to speak Okay. And we have nobody here to speak. Uh, Ms. Gallen, any? Mr. Horton, anything else? Okay, with that being said, this meeting is adjourned.